One of the jankiest games has gotten even more janky, and speedrunners have now been able to beat Hello Neighbor in under six minutes. Let's check it out. First sub 550! What? Yes! So a while back, I covered the any% percent speedrun category of Hello Neighbor. You know, the game where you harass your neighbor and commit a class 3 felony for some pretty vague reasons? Well, at the time, in early 2022, the world record was held with a time of 7 minutes and 50 seconds. Which, honestly, I thought was quite incredible. But now, the world record time has been shaved all the way back to a wild sub-6 minute load removed time of only 5 and a half minutes. So, how did speedrunners save over 2 minutes since then, you might be wondering? Well, it all boils down to a new technique that was discovered colloquially known as lag abuse. In a nutshell, by lowering the game's frame rate to a mere 23 FPS, the lag caused by interacting with certain objects can help the player clip through other objects that otherwise wasn't possible, or at least wasn't consistent enough to be viable in a run. And as you'd expect, this now lets speedrunners skip more sections of the game, which you'll soon see. And the current world record run actually uses an even earlier pre-release build of the game, but I'll touch on that later. And I should clarify, since it often confuses people, but these tricks only appear to be viable in the PC version of the game. Now this new development in the Hello Neighbor speedrun community actually resulted in some controversy, with whether or not these lag abuse tricks should be on the same leaderboard as those that don't use them. And ultimately, the decision was made by the community to create different categories for the any% percent runs, those using the lag abuse tricks and those not. Anyways, that's a quick-ish rundown on what's changed since my last video, so now let's get to the actual run itself. Alright, so time for the any% percent speedrun starts as soon as we skip the intro cutscene to Act 1, and unlike in my previous video where runners used to have to chase the ball down the street for a while, using some lag abuse we can already do a nifty new skip here. So for this trick, you'll actually need to be playing the game in windowed mode, and that's because this trick actually requires us to click on the top part of the window here. By doing this repeatedly, you can actually cause the game's frame rate to drop all the way down to zero. And if you do this enough times, this can actually let you catch up to the ball as it bounces, and touching it will actually cause the player to die, but in a good way, as by doing this, this skips having to run down the rest of the streets to the neighbor's home, as well as this next section. Anyways, with that skip done, we now start back outside, and now you can break and enter into the neighbor's home, grab his TV, plop it on the ground, move back to a certain spot, crouch down, and then if you run towards it just right, you'll actually clip right through the door into the basement. And yeah, this clip here completely removes having to do all the janky jumping tricks to get up to the second floor window here to grab the key, to then be able to open up the door as I showed off in my previous video. What used to take about a minute can now be done in mere seconds, with high-level runners taking less than 10. Anyways, once in the neighbor's basement, we can open up this washing machine that, just like all washing machines, leads to a secret room, where after grabbing this window object, we can jump out of this room, flip this switch to open this gate, and after grabbing this TV, we can run down the hallway here, open up another gate, and yeah, as you might already be expecting by now, we have to do another TV clip here. It's pretty much the same setup as the previous one, so we just drop it down in a certain spot in front of the door, crouch, and then run towards it. And after clipping through, we get a short little cutscene of the neighbor closing in on us. And I found it pretty funny that with this clip, in this cutscene we can see the gate still completely blocking the door just behind the neighbor. I guess the neighbor also learned the power of the lag abuse tricks. Now, much like the TV clip in the first section, doing it here also skips a lot, like us having to get to the generator on the other side of the fence here by stacking some boxes and such. Then, after this short cutscene ends, we have to run all the way to the end of this hallway here. And once we get to the end and realize that we don't have all the keys to open the next locked door, instead of waiting for the neighbor to catch us, we'll actually want to accept our fate and run towards him instead to speed things up and save a few seconds. And yeah, that's actually all of Act 1. 
Now on to the second act. I guess after being kidnapped and knocked out, we awaken locked up in a creepy room with simulated sunlight. But after only a few seconds, for mysterious reasons unexplained, the door just unlocks itself. So we can break out, grab open this vent covering to of course get to this game's mandatory indie horror game vent crawl segment. And after that's done, we are back topside and outside, and we don't spend much time here in Act 2 at all. As if we run over here, grab this crate thing, jump on this box, and then throw the crate below us mid-air along the adjacent wall here, the crate will glitch into the wall. And if you get it right, you can jump off the glitching crate to get a ton of air to make it outside the reinforced fence around the perimeter to end the act. And higher level speedrunners actually just use a basketball that's found outside to do a sort of similar jump, but that method is quite a bit more precise and inconsistent if you don't know how to do it perfectly. Either way though, yeah, no more climbing ladders and stacking boxes to make a leap of faith to get to the trampoline here to jump out, these two objects are all we need. Next up, we get to the apartment section, where normally, in later updates to the game, you had to wait around for several seconds for a letter to drop. But in earlier builds like this one, we can just about skip this section entirely, as the developers left the prompt to interact with the letter in the spot that it eventually drops before it actually does. Nice. This now brings us to the next section, where our protagonist is moving into the decrepit home across the street from the neighbor. Here we have to quickly grab the key that's for some reason just sitting in the back of the car to open up the door. And then after skipping the next cutscene, we have to wait a few seconds for a phone to ring, and as soon as it does, we can move towards it to trigger the next cutscene, which of course, we also skip. Then, cut to nighttime, here is probably my favorite new lag abuse skip. In past non-lag abuse runs, runners had to break into the home, manipulate the neighbor to place a trap in a certain spot, and then use that trap to clip through this door to get to easily the worst part of the run, the fear school bit, where you basically play a timed version of The Floor is Lava, in where a bunch of creepy looking mannequins try to chase you down. I found this section extremely unpredictable, inconsistent, and just difficult overall, so I'm thrilled to share that the entirety of this section can be skipped with some lag abuse. So we'll just grab this tire and simply waltz in through the back window here, and then we can place the tire around this spot. Here we want to jump on the tire, walk up to the wall here, crouch, and then sprint backwards. And if all's done right, we'll clip through the wall, which takes us right into a trigger point to load into the next area. Now there is a slight chance also that you'll end up getting stuck in the wall, which sucks in a run, but hey, it happens, and you can always just reset to the last checkpoint and try again. And just like that, we are running back down into the basement, and after grabbing one of these window light things, we can see that the basement seems to be in a higher state of disrepair than before. Then, after making our way down this hallway, by standing around here, jumping, and then throwing the light below you, you can boost yourself over a trigger point that normally causes a fence to appear before a shadowy figure bamboozles you. But after skipping this and waving goodbye to the now inactive Shadow Boy here as we pass him, we can now run down this hallway and actually make it back to the same room we saw back in Act 1. Now previously, all you had to do here is find a way to make it over the fence dividing this room to get to the nicely lit green door, and then shove the neighbor with the push ability that you normally end up learning after getting to the end of the fear school section. Well, yeah, we didn't learn that move since we didn't exactly do that section. And trying to do this section normally will result in the neighbor grabbing us and resetting us back to the start of the area. But glitchy problems require glitchy solutions. So we'll actually want to grab this chair blocking this door, as well as grab a brick from this wall here. And after that, we can use the chair to boost ourselves onto the door, from which we can then jump across towards the top of the fence here, and then we can use our bricks to lag abuse clip through this door a second time, and doing this actually skips the cutscene requiring the player to push the neighbor away. So with that skipped, we can leisurely just make our way down the hallway once again, where this second time through, we can see that the door at the end is no longer locked down. So we can open it to see this.
Hey, all it needs is a TV and a game console, and honestly, it's a pretty chill room. And with that, Act 3 is done, and we are now on to the final act, where after grabbing the skateboard, instead of having to wait for the giant neighbor to break the room apart, with another lag abuse clip with this basketball here, we can dip out early. And once outside, we find ourselves in a large white area, where everything is several magnitudes larger than us. Then, after making our way to this giant toaster, since the game is as janky as it is, we don't even need to flip the switch that you normally need to to power it on. And to add to that, the trigger area to have the toaster launch you up actually extends beyond its model. So if we just jump near it like this, and then jump just before it activates, it will fling us way up high, and we'll want to move ourselves mid-flight towards this ledge here with the umbrella on it. Once on, we can grab the umbrella, and then place down the skateboard we grabbed earlier near the corner of this shelf, where we can use it to do one last glitch for this run, to instantly give us a bunch of speed to help us make it over to the house that's on the neighbor's back. And this is honestly, I think, the most difficult trick of the speedrun to pull off, especially with the added stress that one small error will cause you to fall all the way down to the bottom, which would require you to do everything here all over again, of course costing precious time. If you come in too fast between this gramophone and window thing, you'll get caught on some invisible walls that will drop almost all of your speed. And if you come in too slowly, you'll just lose enough altitude on the way to not be able to make it to the house. So you have to basically thread the needle here to ensure that you have enough speed and altitude. Yeah, this definitely didn't take me almost two hours to get it once. But if you get it all down and use the umbrella to float over, opening this door takes us to the hallways filled with papers. And after getting through this area, we're taken to what's supposed to be the game's climax, where we witness a younger version of our protagonist dealing with some trauma, symbolized here with this large, shadowy fella. And at this point in the run, we can basically relax, as that's about it for the speedrun strats, as all we have to do is stand between the shadowy figure and the kid to protect him at certain points in this area, and with each attack we absorb, we actually grow a bit as we have to make our way from point to point, often having to wait around several seconds for the kid to catch up. Then, after absorbing one final punch, I guess we grow large enough to defeat the shadow or something. And this then brings us to a white void with a lone green door. And as we go through that door, that is officially time for the speedrun, as our protagonist wakes up and it turns out it was all a dream or whatever. Now, although many of the lag abuse tricks throughout the run save a bunch of time, they can be quite tricky to get consistently, so they're definitely tougher to pull off than it may look. But to call the lag abuse tricks useful for speedrunning this game would be an understatement, since compared to the current world record without using lag abuse tricks, it ends up being around 25% faster. Anyways, the current world record as of the making of this video is held by a name I don't think I can say on YouTube without getting demonetized, with a crazy load removed time of only 5 minutes and 30 seconds. And this run was actually done on a pre-release build of the game, which although allowed on the leaderboard, comes with a few differences and its own controversy. It's almost the same as what we covered in this video, with some major differences including being able to actually move in the Act 1 cutscene where the neighbor tries to catch you. There aren't any objects outside in Act 2, so you actually have to bring one from inside. Jumping over the trigger point in the basement is slightly easier as there's less stuff on the right side here. And then, probably the biggest benefit of the pre-release build is that the start of the ending sequence is quite a bit shorter, saving around 17 seconds, which may not sound like much, but when runs take less than 6 minutes, 17 seconds isn't insignificant. But yeah, this is a pre-release build, and either the developers or the publisher, Tiny Build, actually recently took down this build from the Steam Depot, so you can't even downpatch to it anymore if you wanted to, making it not exactly accessible. So, like I said, it carries its own little bit of controversy. And that's speedrunning Hello Neighbor Any% percent with the lag abuse tricks, and I hope you enjoy. If you did, check out some of my other speedrun videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find your way back here in the future. 
Also, a special thank you to Chris and Big Boy for helping out with this video. If you'd like to get started with speedrunning this game yourself, head on over to the speedrunning Discord, which I'll have linked for you in the description below. And as always, thank you all so much for running with me today, and I will see you in a bit.